fishing, just fishing, fishing, just fishing. Chicken jerks, chicken jerks, chicken jerks, fish. Chicken jerks, chicken jerks, just fishing. Chicken jerks, chicken jerks, chicken jerks, fish. Chicken jerks, chicken jerks, just fishing. Chicken jerks, chicken jerks, chicken jerks, fish. Chicken jerks, chicken jerks. All right, here we go, guys. Lots to talk about in this video. We're going to go over crab selection, and I'm going to offer my opinion. And let me stress, this is my opinion on the different, uh, different types of crabs we use to talk fish here in Long Island. And part of that opinion will include... If I, John Halkius, only had one crab to pick to go tog fishing with, what would it be? We're also going to show highlights from our October 24, a Sunday, dreary, overcast, windy day, Rhode Island reef fishing trip we took on Rick's beautiful 32-foot blue jay with John Skinner and our good friend Cliff. Um, and this was only the third time, and I, I had to really think back, but the third time in the last five years that I was not jigging with togging, uh, while togging. Um, and the, it, the reason I wasn't is the current was ripping pretty good at this reef we were on. And it, it, although you'll see the yellow rod out, the goofish rod, I tried, it just was not to be. Um, and finally, you're not going to be surprised by this, but, uh, John Skinner put on a clinic. Uh, he, he also has not done much conventional black fishing. Um, but unlike me, he had no problem adapting. Uh, he finished the day with 11 keepers, all while using a new rod, a Maxell spinning rod. Um, so yeah, that was interesting for me to see. Usually when we're, we're fishing these weightier areas for tog, you see guys using conventional rigs. I guess Skinner's not a conventional guy. Hopefully he comes out with a video and gives more detail on the rod. Uh, but it was impressive to see somebody with a spinner fishing the conventional way and catching so many tog. Um, and, with, you know, with that out of the way, let's talk about crabs. Uh, while there are lots and lots of options out there, I'm going to limit the choice of crabs to the ones I know and have personally fished. I'm sure there are many other crabs out there that you guys fish. Um, and don't shoot me if I don't include the ones that, that you like. I'm going by personal experience only. So first, let's talk about the venerable green crab. And what are its pros? It's relatively cheap. It's hardy. It can live a long time in a crab trap. It's usually easily found at bait and tackle stores. Most of them carry it. And, you know, it's relatively cheap. I mean, you can, you can buy an entire bushel for about 70 bucks. Um, and most importantly, in my eyes, the green crabs have a natural chum to them, that orange innards that when you put the crab in the water, you see it spreading all over the place. And I can only imagine when it hits the bottom, how it draws tog out from nearby rocks and crevices. The second crab, probably the, the second most popular, again, in eastern Long Island, uh, the white crab. And it, it has one big pro to it. Uh, it catches big fish. Um, I don't know the science behind it, but it seems that every big tog caught, and big meaning, you know, the the 12 pound to the world record class tog, um, it seems like they're caught on white crabs. So there's something there. If somebody knows why, please feel free to comment. Third crab, the Asian crab, the pros, as John Skinner pointed out in a couple of recent videos, you can catch these yourself and they fit nicely on a jig. And I've personally noticed a, a slightly better hookup ratio with the Asian crabs when they're on a jig. Uh, it, it fits almost snugly, perfectly on the hook. And there's less, I guess, meat for the, the tog to grab and pull off the crab. They generally just bite the whole thing and it's easier to hook them up. And last but not least, the hermit crab. And the pros you'll see here, I wrote tog crack. Um, it, it, tog do love hermit crabs. The, there is one big con, though, to this. Why doesn't everybody use uh, hermit crabs besides availability and expense? The biggest to me is it's also sea bass and porgy crack. Um, I actually hate it when somebody brings hermit crabs on my boat or on a boat I'm fishing on uh, because I honestly feel that it attracts every porgy and sea bass in a five-mile radius to the spot just under your boat. Um, and last, if I only had to pick one species of crab to bring on my boat, I'm limited to one species, I would pick the green crab. And it may be a surprising choice for a lot of you. But I love how they build the bite. I love that they stay on the hook well. And at the end of the, end of the day, they're a proven commodity in catching tog. And uh, maybe a conservative choice, but that would be my choice. Again, guys, these are my thoughts only. What's your preference? Leave a comment and tell me why. And with the crab part of our program out of the way, let's get to the fishing. Here you go, Rick. Oh, that's a problem. Yeah, that's 
There you go, Skinner. You know what the problem is? When I put down here, I'm on top of the rock. I have to go off the, the rock. Yeah. So what I did is I gave it more slack to come down off the rock. That's the problem. Nice fish. So I'm, I'm sitting right on top of a, high, a really high spot here. Because I drop down, boom, I'm on the bottom. And then if I don't let it drift off. Let a little bit of line out. Yeah, that, yeah, it's a lot of, a lot of sculpting. Yeah, it could. Still thinking we, you know, too close to the boats and we don't have the, you know. There you go. Better? Better. Okay. Bow hooked? Oh, nice fish. Keeper. Uh, I think it's a keeper. <laughs> yeah, it should be a keeper. Nice. And as much as I would have loved to jig the whole trip, you see the current ripping. I couldn't do it. I switched over to my uh, Tsunami Trophy 6'8 slow pitch rod. You've seen it before, paired with a Maxell 20 hybrid. Um, ironically, it, it turns out that the Maxell rod that Skinner's using is, is the spinning version. We believe it's a slow pitch spinning rod. It's a spinning version of the rod I'm using. And I believe, I, I again, I tried to find this rod to post the link to it uh, in my affiliate section. I believe it's now called a Maxell. Maxell and Tsunami are actually owned by the same company, so that would make sense. Better one. Better? A little better for me than what I've been catching. Yeah, I feel like I fell. No, you got a good one, Skinner. Skinner's is bigger. <laughs> good job, Skinner. Tighten the drag on this. <laughs> Damn it. My pass. There we go. Yeah, it is another keeper. So that's four, five, six, six keepers. Oh, were you in the box? You were on a rock, huh? Um, oh, all right. Think you got me too? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's a keeper. No. Not a good fish. No. Oh, look at all the fucking cra cra crabs over here I never saw. Just a keeper, just a keeper. What do you think? Yeah, that's yeah. What are you talking about? That's we'll end it with the last keeper of the trip. All thanks to Captain Rick for taking us and putting us on the fish. As always, if you like these videos, hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber and you like this type of content, please hit that subscribe button.
took a little run. Close. He's up. Good. Keeper. 